sight. Oh, I still got my flaps down, that's why. Whoa! Hey guys, and welcome back to tropical, always sunny Worcester, Massachusetts. I can't believe we're halfway through May and I haven't taken you guys flying yet this year, but as you can see, the weather has been a real bear. Today, what I'd like to do is show you guys a practical experiment you can do at home using Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that's not just for flight sim enthusiasts, but also VFR pilots like myself. We're going to put my flying skills to the test and see if I can survive the worst case scenario, VFR to IMC. If you'd like to see the worst conditions I've ever flown in, click here. The worst conditions a VFR pilot's rated for, click here. And the worst case scenario, IMC, and we'll see if I can survive and get my passengers home safely. Alrighty, so here we are all fired up and ready to go out in the ramp at uh, Worcester Regional. And this is going to be, uh, I'm going to show you guys the worst conditions I've ever flown in. I was not recording at the time, I really wish I was. Um, so this is an example of one time when I was really kind of scared to be flying and I actually called my flight instructor ahead of time who was just a few miles away who I was actually going to see for a lesson and I said, is it really safe for me to be out here? Because I was looking out you know, at the horizon and I could see the fog in the trees and the cloud layer was really low. It was 2,500 feet and Worcester's elevation is 1,000, so it was only 1,500 feet above my current elevation. Um, I usually go over there at, at 3,000, so I wasn't liking that. Um, and he said, don't worry about it. No, seriously, it's fine, just go for it. And this is one instance where I discovered that it's a really good idea to trust your instructor. They've been flying a lot more than you have, and they know a hell of a lot more than you. So I went with it and was pleasantly surprised with how not terrible the conditions were. So let's take a look at what it looked like. Um, we're all set and ready to go for takeoff clearance here, so I'll request clearance. Cleared for takeoff 33, departure straight out for 8027 Fox Drive. Um, and as you guys can see, I'm using one of my favorite tools here, which is Track IR. It's, uh, you can see it in another video of mine, but it's tracking this hat on my head. And that way I can see what I would see if I was flying. And it makes it makes Flight Simulator a lot more realistic, just so much better. So line up on the runway here, and um, we should be good to go. Full power, heels to the floor, temperatures and pressure stay in the green. A little bit of right rudder. Airspeed's alive. And the winds are light. Uh, I wasn't expecting any rain that day, but as you can see, the conditions are less than optimal. And there's 60 knots, rotate. I like that one notch of flaps, lets you get off the ground a little bit faster. Continue your climb. and pitch for VY, which is 76 knots in the Warrior. And I know you guys aren't going to believe me, but this is the first time I've flown a real scenario in Flight Simulator in probably over five years, um, despite being a developer and having it installed on my computer. Um, yeah, it's true. Maybe I'll share with you guys someday my, um, I don't know what to call it, dark, dark history with Flight Simulator. It's, it's an interesting story. Um, that kind of turned me off to it and almost turned me off from real aviation, but I, I think that's the story for another day. Um, as you guys can see, we're, we're climbing up here, approaching 600 feet above, which is usually where I kind of declare clear abort and turn on course. And we're going to head down to South Bridge, which is uh, about heading 210, so we can turn, start our turn left, left on course here. So one thing that made this flight possible was the fact that Worcester is a thousand feet elevation where the clouds were 2,500. 
So if you have to stay 500 feet below the cloud deck for VFR minimums, that's only 1,000 feet above the airport, but it is 2,000 feet above the ground. And I know a lot of people like Heather, who you've seen in my other videos, who fly at airports that are uh, underneath the class Bravo of like Boston International, and they conduct all of their flight training at 2,000 feet. So this is not that unusual for them. Um, oof. Yeah, that visibility though. So uh, a quick way to gauge visibility, that runway right there, runway 29 at Worcester, is almost two miles long. So visibility is supposedly five miles. Uh, I can tell you that it was actually better than this, or at least it felt better than this when I actually went flying that day, for sure. Um, I don't know if it's flight simulator or, or what, but, but this does not feel great. I probably would have turned around if it looked like this. Um, but you get the point. This is still within VFR minimums, and it's really not that bad. I'm kind of climbing up as high as I can until I feel like that cloud deck is right above me. Uh, it's really hard to judge that last 500 feet below the clouds, and uh, I, I've kind of been told this, I'll say it unofficially, which is the only way to really know that height is to go up and find it, and then descend back down to maintain it safe. Um, not that I condone that, but it is certainly a way to do it if you're willing to do that. Um, so I don't see Southbridge on the horizon yet, so I think what we'll do now is we'll switch over to phase two. I'll show you guys what it would look like if you just departed your home airport and the weather immediately got down to the, the worst case VFR scenario. Okay, so we're back now in the worst case VFR scenario. And I don't know about you guys, but the first time that I loaded this, this blew my mind. This is what the FAA considers to be safe for a VFR pilot to fly in. Holy crap. I can't, I can't see anything. And just so you guys know, this is as far as I've gone with this before. I, I loaded up like this situation just to make sure that I could record and everything, and it blew my mind. So I can only imagine what like it's gonna be when it's worse than this. Um, <laughs> I already can't see anything. Um, I don't even know if I'd be able to find a runway like this. This is crazy. Um, and I'm gonna treat this as realistically as possible for you guys um, as soon as we get into the really bad situation and I'm gonna really play it like my life depends on it and like I'm gonna try to keep everything as realistic as possible between going between GPS's and, and um, maps and charts and stuff because this is, this, is some, this is some scary stuff if this happened to you in real life. I can't imagine getting into a situation this bad Usually for me, you can see some of my other videos, it's usually like thunderstorms trying to cut you off and that's about as bad as it gets for me. This is, this is unbelievable. Wow. And this is, I'm already descending down 2,000 feet. The ground's probably about 1,000 feet below me, which is so scary. Alrighty, so I guess we're gonna take the plunge now and go for the, the really bad VFR to IMC conditions and I'm gonna do my best to get us home because I don't, I don't even, what's that on the, ground over there. Is that another airport? Yeah, I guess. Nope. No, it's just a water tower and a highway. Okay, well, I know where that highway goes, so that's Route 90, um, the Mass Pike in Massachusetts. So I guess I'm going to start flying along that, and we're going to see what happens when the conditions get worse. All right, here we go. Okay. Um, well, there's definitely no seeing the ground anymore, that's for sure, or that highway that I just found. Um, all righty. Um, well, I guess I'm going to do my best to hold 2,000 feet here um, because I, I can see on my sectional chart that's pretty clear of everything, uh, the minimum safe altitude. And I can see Southbridge on my GPS, and that's where I was headed. Um, for you real-world pilots, we've got to watch my altitude there. Um, it's probably going to be kind of funny for real IFR pilots to watch me try to handle this because I do not fly IFR. Um, I've never even been that close to IFR conditions as I just demonstrated. Um, if you guys know what special VFR is, I've never even requested special VFR, which is when you ask to depart an airport and head in a direction of better weather, even if that airport you departed from is technically IFR. Um, so for whatever godforsaken reason I got myself into this situation today, 
and I'm still trying to get to Southbridge. If you end up in this situation, I would say my best advice that I've heard is to look down, like directly down, which I can do here with Track IR, because let's say the visibility right now is three quarters of a mile. What are you three quarters of a mile up in the sky? That's like 3,800 feet. So you'll pretty much always be able to see the ground, if not in front of you, which as you can see is totally hopeless. Um, I, I, oh, there's the hill. Okie dokie. Um, I'm coming up on three Bravo zero here. Um, I guess I'm gonna see what it looks like and if it seems like I can see it well enough to come back around for a landing, I'll try it there. And if not, like obviously, like flying in the real world, I've given this situation some thought. And if I can't do that, I guess I'm gonna do my best to get back to Worcester and use the ILS there, even though I'm not rated for it. Okay, well, there's the taxiway, there's the runway. So this would be, yeah, and then, wow, look at how the beacon is like totally obscured, wow. Um, well, I guess I'm gonna give this a shot. It's probably not gonna be that pretty. I'm already descending below TPA. Um, the runways there are, uh, I don't remember, um, runway two zero and I can't do reciprocals while I'm flying in this kind of situation. Um, um, well, I remember it's kind of like two, two one, runway two zero. It's it's runway two zero and zero two. That's what it is. So if I get back, well, there's my thirty five degrees bank for the day right there. Um, but at least I gained some altitude. Okay, so if I kind of head in that direction, like the opposite direction. Um, then the winds are with me if I'm landing runway zero two. So it should kind of be behind me at this point. So I'm gonna to try to execute like a smooth 360 um, or 180 and try to keep my altitude pretty constant and my speed at 100 knots. I mean, this is something you should be able to do from your VFR training because you are required to have a certain number of hours underneath um, the hood which just means like wearing a vision obscuring device while flying as a VFR pilot. Um, your instructor should kind of take you through these basic maneuvers. So hopefully I can do this. I'm only 300 feet off the ground right now, or like, I guess a little bit, no, 500 feet off the ground. So it doesn't feel great, that's for sure. But I'm doing a nice like standard rate, a little bit more turn here, and I'm gonna come around to heading, I guess I should go a little bit past it, and then try to, this is not going to go well. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys right now. I guess I'm going to start slowing down and bringing the nose down um, until I kind of recognize the features of the ground. Luckily, this is the airport where I did a lot of my training, so I should be able to recognize it, or like the area at least. Like, yep, yep, I recognize those fields uh, are right off the end of the runway. So my guess is that it's kind of going to be to the right here. Um, I'm still really fast. 90 knots. Before landing checklist, um, fuel pump, mixture, master mags. Master switch is on both. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I guess I'm going to go around. Um, alrighty then. Um, do I try to come back around for it a second time? Yeah, I guess I will. Um, this is probably a dumb decision. Like this gets into like the pilot ethical junk that I hate and it's like never a good idea to be thinking about that while you're actually flying. Like if this was the real world right now, I like I should not be flying right now. I am not rated for this. So if I manage to land down here at Southbridge, I can kind of get on the ground, kiss the ground, be happy that I'm safe and then kind of decide what to do later. But if I don't do that and I have to like go back to Worcester or something, I have to tell people. Like I have to get on the radio and I have to tell the controlling authority that I am stuck flying when I shouldn't be. And that's, that's highly recommended that you take that approach. It's just, I'm sure there's a lot of paperwork that goes with it. Like I'm sure it can't be good for like like you're probably gonna get like a license suspension or something, like this is not good. Not to mention what I'm doing right now is totally flying blind when there could be somebody else on an IFR approach here, like not seeing me because I'm in the clouds. 
And one thing I forgot to do, actually, that would really matter in the real world, I guess I should do it here, is to turn off the strobe lights. If you leave your strobe lights on, a lot of planes have this as a placard, if you leave your strobe lights on in, like, a cloud, it, it, it can, like, blind and disorient you, so I just turn them off. Okay, we're back up to TPA and roughly a beam the airport, and I only know that from my GPS. I can't. And I'm like scraping those trees. Really, like, an engine failure would be. Oh, there's the runway. Okay. It's like. I'm gonna try and add two notches of flaps and come in here real fast. And at least the winds are working with me here. Come on, come on. Well, ugh, we'll bouncy here. Well, I made it on the ground. Okay, well, I proved I can do that. I'm, I'm not done yet, though. I don't know about you guys. I'm not done. I want to... I'm going to get back up in the air, and I'm going to see what would happen if I decided to go back to Worcester and do an ILS landing. Because I've, like, I've, I've tried... I've used the localizer before, obviously, and like done as much of like an instant approach as you can underneath the hood with your instructor. But I want to see what that looks and feels like if this was like the high pressure situation that it is. So I'm just going to pop back up, same conditions, and we're going to try heading back over to Worcester. I'll see you guys there. I'll spare you guys 30 minutes of me wandering around in the fog, trying various circle to land techniques and discovering that the glide slope needle on my localizer was inoperative in this aircraft. Interestingly enough, the runway 29 glide slope antennas are inoperative at Worcester right now, which threw some unexpected realism into the scenario. Eventually, after flying for almost an hour total, I was starting to get really irritated and losing faith in myself. Then, something interesting happened. I had all of these plans and high hopes for you guys, and I was going to like execute a perfect ILS approach, and everything was going to go well, and none of those things happened. At least I have plenty of fuel, that's all I can say. So I should have the runway in sight. Oh, I still got my flaps down, that's why. Whoa! Full power. Okay. I, I'm going to be fascinated to watch that later because I don't even know how that happened. Whew. Okay. All right, we're good now. So I just got to get my little bit of altitude again. Wow, okay. That's another story for later, too, is the only time back when I used to play Flight Simulator, like, a lot for training. Um, the one time that I died, like, completely without expecting to, is a really, really good lesson. And I should do a video on that at some point for you guys. After some more circling in the clouds, I eventually popped out in a location close enough to the runway to make an attempt at landing. Uh, inside the white arc, um, those are the aiming point bars. So this would be like a, like an emergency landing that I've practiced before. Powers all the way out. One, two, three notches of flaps. I probably have five thousand feet to go on this runway. It's really long. There's that heavy crosswind that I'm fighting too, but at least I got the runway in sight now. I'm over the top of it. Sixty knots. Oof, not the prettiest landing. Put them on the ground, back home, and I can take a deep breath. Wow. Well, that was, like, a lot worse than I was expecting it to be. Jeez. Well, now we know... I had, I had so many high hopes. I was going to use, like, the ILS 
system with the localizer, but it's 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 in op in my airplane, and I know that it's in op at the airport right now, so I guess it's kind of realistic. But I had all these high hopes of how well that was going to go, and I think I just proved to you that it did not. So I hope that's a lesson to everybody watching and myself included. Wow. I. I wish I had more to say to you guys, but I don't. If you want to do me a favor and make up for what I just showed you in the comments section, why don't you tell me what you guys have read or have heard are the best, the best suggestions for surviving VFR to IMC. I just survived it twice in Flight Simulator, but it wasn't pretty. And I think that I can attribute that to how unprepared I was for this. I like the GPS was giving me problems. I didn't know where I was. I didn't have my charts open. So it's a really realistic situation for if you just got completely sidetracked and like ended up someplace in a situation where you were not expecting to be in, which is what I hope to convey to you guys. So there you have it. I guess until next time, Squawk VFR and have fun.